Understanding your camera in wildlife photography is essential to getting good images. In this video, while we won't be covering the absolute basic settings like shutter speed, aperture, white balance, and many others, this video will be covering a few more particular settings that are fundamental building blocks, in my opinion, to wildlife photography camera setups. First, let's dive into focus techniques. So many cameras vary so widely, so it's hard to get too much in detail with this video, but back button focusing can be an absolute must to understand your wildlife photography if you're shooting autofocus. If you shoot autofocus, you'll notice that every time I click the shutter button, the camera will attempt to refocus. However, let's say that you want to keep the focus in a locked position. Simply hold down your back button focus and your focus becomes locked. This means that now you can fire off as many shots as you want with the shutter without readjusting focus. Now, why might this be important? Well, mostly for two reasons. One, if you are taking a fast series of images at the same depth of field, using autofocus to re-hunt for those shots every single time would be slow and slow you down and be ineffective. But even more commonly is that when you're autofocusing, you may not be able to effectively tack focus in the composition that you're desiring. So in these scenarios, you can simply back button focus in a composition in which the animal will be more easily tracked with autofocus. And then you can move your composition into the desired position and then push down the shutter button. Coming out of autofocus techniques, let's move into two essential manual focus settings that will help you out in the field. Focus peaking is a feature available on most all modern day mirrorless cameras and is getting incredibly helpful for perfect focus shots when in manual. Every camera brand looks slightly different, but essentially what it does is create outlines to make it easier to tell what depth of field your focus is currently at. Personally, I do have my focus peaking on with a custom button, so I can quickly turn it off and on depending on the scenario. When you're talking about manual focusing, however, another setting that's helpful if you're working with more still subjects, like maybe a ground feeding animal or a perch bird, is to focus punch in. Many more advanced cameras and even many mid-level mirrorless cameras now have a button that you can press in to punch your zoom to three times, four times, or even five times the distance so that you can get an enlarged image on your viewfinder or the back of your LCD screen and see what you're trying to focus onto more clearly. If you have time with a more still subject out in the field, I always use this technique because it's nearly impossible to miss focus this way. It should be important to mention too that a lot of times wildlife photographers may be unaware, but focus can be slightly missed so easily, which leads to very big subconscious differences as you're viewing the photo as a viewer. So for example, maybe you tack focus onto the tail of the bird instead of the head, or maybe the back of an ear on a deer instead of the eyes. These manual focus settings really help prevent these things from happening and are super helpful for tacking manual focus perfectly. Now, when I talk about taking images, this may be one of the most overlooked settings people get in wildlife photography as beginners, which is mechanical shutter. Some wildlife photographers I've taught see a setting on their camera named silent mode and get excited because now their camera doesn't make a sound. However, when you do this, you switch into electronic shutter, which causes the camera sensor to read the image in a different type of way. Without getting too deep into it, simply stated, a mechanical shutter will take the whole image at the same exact moment in a single snap, leading to an accurate reproduction of what was laid out across the whole image at that single moment. However, while in an electronic shutter mode, the image will be read line by line across the whole sensor. And in some types of photography, this isn't a big deal. However, in wildlife photography, since we often deal with incredibly fast moving subjects, the results in rolling shutter, which tilt your image one direction or another, or distort fast moving subjects can really have large effects on your photos. While talking about how images are shot, number five is a simple one, but make sure you are familiar with how to turn the burst mode on with your camera. Since things happen so fast with wildlife photography, it's dire to make sure that you have the ability when desired to snap off images quickly so that you don't miss the action. 
in burst mode rather than simply taking one image every time you press down the shutter button. Burst allows you to take tens or even hundreds with really good cameras of images within a few seconds so that you don't miss anything that's going on. And lastly, turning on your level gauge saves you so much time in post-processing. What a level gauge does on your camera is essentially tell you when your camera is leveled with the horizon line and it's correct. It's easy in these fast paced moments in wildlife photography to accidentally shoot your camera tilted, which can lead to subconsciously weird appearances in images as a viewer if you don't correct it in editing. This can be corrected in editing, however, it's just more cumbersome and it's better just to be able to get this correct in shooting the actual image. So thank you guys for watching. If you want to check out more helpful videos on Bird Burger, please consider subscribing below and I'll see you guys next time.